Welcome back, Trap Talk. I'm Matt Johnson. We are literally days away from ice fishing. We are going to be on the ice in a matter of days. I know I spent some time talking with uh, Mr. Gens today. He is going to be headed out to chase some fish relatively soon, as well as several others. Lakes, uh, states like North Dakota, northern part of Minnesota. We're at the verge of being on ice, catching some fish. So the excitement is here. Today, we're going to talk about something a little out of the ordinary. A lot of times when we think about ice fishing, uh, the term panfish comes to mind, and that seems to be the dominant force as far as the species is concerned. Today we're going to talk about aggressive game fish, game fish being your walleyes, your pike. Yes, they get some hype on ice fishing, today we're going to target them specifically with aggressive tactics. We're not going to be using dead sticks, we're not going to be using tip-ups. These are running gun game fish. So aggressive tactics for game fish here, definitely as we get into the early ice period, you're going to see that these sort of tactics are going to come in hand, very, very handy. You're going to see that aggressive situations are going to come into play because fish are in the shallows, they're using still abundant green weeds, they're chasing forage, they're going to run and smack presentations. It's not going to be a waiting game to where you sit there and jiggle over a fish hoping they bite. No, they will come in and they will crush baits. Hopefully by the end of today we can go on some touch over some of these ideas and tactics, techniques, gear choices, some location choices, so that next time you hit the ice, be it here probably in a few days to a couple weeks for most of us, you can target these fish aggressively and catch more fish with a rod and reel. So aggressive game fish, like I said, pike, walleyes, bass, whatever it is, whatever you're targeting here, outside of the panfish realm, hopefully we can touch on some of those variables. To get things started, location as we get towards early ice. One thing I look for right off the bat is green weeds. Green weeds, as we know, provide oxygen. They provide forage. They provide comfort. They provide the habitat that these fish want so that fish are comfortable so that when they not only feed, they have a safe haven to call home. So green weeds provide all of the characteristics that fish want. And if you have green weeds in a system throughout the calendar period, or let's say the entire ice fishing season, you can bet for the most part fish are going to relate to those green weeds. When weeds start to die off, when oxygen duplicity starts to take form, those sorts of reasons are why fish vacate weed beds. But if you have green weeds that provide oxygen, provide the elements that make it comfortable and safe that a fish can adhere to, you're going to have fish. So green weeds, focus on green weeds, and I like to find the deepest green weeds I can. The best time to find deep green weeds to prepare you for early ice is in your boat right now. A lot of my close friends are out actually today, out in their boat, no rods in hand, they got an underwater camera, and they're scoping out spots for early ice because they know it's coming. They break ice some nights to get into the lake, so guess what? We're right around the corner from being out on first ice. So they're out there marking those deep green weeds, the deep weed spots, because they know they're going to hold fish. So weeds at early ice for your game fish are going to be an awesome spot to counter on or to focus on here. So deep green weeds, mark them on your GPS in the summer, find them now, waypoint them, look at maps, try and find where the weed edges is. Start in those areas and start punching holes to find that transition area from where it goes to weeds to no weeds. And those big game fish are going to be targeted in those areas. So green weeds, other structure close to shore. You're not talking two, three, four feet of water, but that 8 to 15 foot range, that offshore structure, underwater points, rocks, gravel, stump fields, whatever type of uh, cover you have in the lake that you're fishing or body water that you're fishing can hold these sorts of game fish. So again, focus on activity. You're finding a ton of little perch ton of bluegills and crappies, your bigger pike, your walleyes, they're going to follow suit. They're going to be eating on those sorts of things. So pay a close attention to the surroundings to get a better understanding of where these game fish are going to be sitting at. So as far as location goes, like I said, I like green weeds, main lake points, any areas that have massive channels or sections where lakes neck down, fish are going to hold to those areas because it draws in bait fish. So bodies of water like Minnetonka to where you have lots of bays, connected by channels. Mouths of channels are going to hold fish, but again, practice safe caution. Early ice. Ice is never safe no matter what time of year you're out there. Early ice especially, and some of the areas next to these channels can be thin ice. So be careful. Go with one, two, three buddies. Make sure that you guys have a system in place. Um, we don't want anything to happen out there, so be cautious, definitely. But outside these channels, these mouths are going to hold fish. Like I said, I said a rock piles just off of main shore structure. Because this time of year, in the fall, we're finding a lot of our fish up shallow gorging themselves mainly to feed where they move back out for comfort. Outside weed edges are going to be that comfort. So location, like we said, outside weed edges, offshore structure, look for anything out of the ordinary, that jetties off from shoreline, points, shallow flats, those sorts of areas are going to hold your fish right now. So now that we have an idea of where maybe to target some of these fish as a general rule of thumb, how do we go about getting these fish to bite? 
Like I said, the whole topic here is aggressive game fish. The idea behind it is we're targeting these fish at a time of year where they're going to want to run down a bait and hit it pretty aggressively. You know, watching these fish on an underwater camera, it's not uncommon to see one jigging and one to come out of nowhere before you even get a chance to see it, a pike, and miss your bait. Walleyes also will come in and hit pretty aggressively. So what we're doing is we're trying to target these fish with aggressive presentations. Quick, simple, large, you know, this isn't getting a finesse application in place. Now bear in mind, this is a general rule. I'm not saying that every body of water holds true. I'm not saying when you hit the ice the first time here in a couple weeks that you need to fish aggressive for every situation. No, you need to bring a finesse tactics as well, but the idea behind this is more often than not these fish are going to be aggressive at first ice. They still got those feed bags on. So touching on tackle, some gear options. First we're going to the rod choices. As you know, Thorn Brothers Custom Rod and Tackle and Blaine makes a lot of custom ice rods. Everything from your panfish up to your giant light trout, your big pike through the ice, and everything in between. The rod I'm holding here happens to be a Professional Plus series. This is a Graphite Professional Plus. They come in a variety of sizes, everything from 32 inches up to 48 inches. Stout, designed to hold a lot of power. This is going to be your run and gun aggressive pike rod. The Graphite gives you some sensitivity so you can feel those hits. It also gives you power on hook set, power on play, a lot of things that you want in an ice rod. So that Graphite Professional Plus is going to work great for all sorts of jigging spoons, swimming lures, you know, your half ounce buckshot rattlesmoons from Northland, your bigger puppet minnows from Northland Tackle, your larger salmon uh, chubby darters are going to work great with this sort of rod. Big tube jigs, tube presentations, whatever it might be, you know, that Professional Plus cup with a 1500 or 2500 series Shimano reel is going to give you a lot of power to land big fish. Oversized guides, I don't know if you're going to see them that close, but the oversized guides are going to give you the option to not worry as much about freeze up. So it gives you, again, versatility because when we're chasing big fish and running and gunning, you might not flip the trap. You might be on the ice moving around. So rods like this Professional Plus were great for your largest game fish. Moving down the row, uh, your walleye, you know, walleye sweetheart series from Thorn Brothers comes in two options. You're going to have a medium and a medium heavy. Basic difference is your medium heavy is going to allow you to fish baits up to say three eighth ounce, half ounce. These larger spoons, your chubby darters, those sorts of things, down to let's say quarter ounce. That's going to be your ideal presentations for the medium heavy. The medium is going to allow you to fish baits down to sixteenth ounce, eighth ounce, up to say quarter to you know five eighths, something around those lines, or three eighths, I should say those lines so that you can fish them effectively. So on this one I happen to have uh, just a number four Samuel Chubby Darter, Glow Red seems to be one of my favorites. This is going to be on one of your medium action blanks. This is going to be one of my aggressive tactics for right away at early ice to chase down pike and walleye. You'll also be surprised how many big crappies and bass will smack these Chubby Darters, puppet minnows, jigging spoons, whatever it might be. So rod option like I said you got the medium and medium heavy walleye sweetheart series. This happens to be a 500 series Shimano Symmetry. Works great and bounces up very well. Shimano offers a line of 500 series reels. You got the 500 series Sienna, Sedona, Sahara, and Symmetry. And then you also have a few thousand series. That new thousand series Stratic CI4 micro line is going to be awesome. I got a couple mounted on some of my panfish rods and walleye rods. Very lightweight in a thousand series. It's actually lighter than any of the 500 series that they offer. Larger spool, less coil up, a little bigger diameter, so then you can also get some heavier line on there. So, except medium, medium heavy walleye sweetheart, great option for running and gunning. Uh, then you move down to another option that I fish a lot for my walleyes. It's a perch sweetheart. We label these rods at Thorn Brothers perch, walleye, panfish, whatever it might be, as a general rule of thumb for what the rods can be used for. However, you want to match a rod to this desired presentation you're fishing. The reason I break out the perch is that it has a 16th ounce jigging spoon on it. If I use a 16th ounce jigging spoon a lot for, let's say, your bass and your walleyes, fishing, running and gunning and hole hopping for these things, I turn to your perch sweetheart. It fishes that bait better. If you're fishing an 8th ounce jigging spoon or say a quarter ounce jigging spoon, you go to a walleye sweetheart, no matter the species you're targeting. So again, the species name dictated to the rod doesn't mean it has to be fished for that species. Perch sweetheart is, tends to be my go-to option for a lot of walleye, so I use the perch sweetheart a lot. And that's why I'm throwing it into aggressive tactics because this can definitely be used to aggressively entice walleyes. So there you have it. Your rod options basically from medium light up to, I would say, heavy action. And uh, not really extra heavy for your 
ice fishing, but a heavy action is going to be great for pike. So you got all the spectrums covers as far as rods go from chasing bass and walleyes up to your largest fish being pike under the ice and also lake trout. So as far as line goes, monofilament is going to be an excellent option. You know, your copolymers, you know, Northland Tackle has got the Bionic Ice brand out. Very, very effective. Comes in a variety of pound tests and two great color patterns. Look for pound test lines to be from 5 to, I would say, 10 or 12 for your pike. You know, if you want to use a leader material, you certainly can do so, whether it be a tie-on wire. Tiger wire is a great product. You can actually tie wire on there. So if you're jigging for pike, I oftentimes add that to a lot of my lines so I don't have to worry about breaking off. And you'd be, uh, you'd be pretty shocked, too, to see how many walleyes do not shy away from a, a tie-on leader. Because, again, we're focusing on aggressive presentations. You're looking at that instinct, this reaction fish, to come in and just smack a bait. So having a tieable leader on there does not make as bit of difference. Going to braids, uh, the Power Pro Ice Lines I've been using a lot in the last couple of years, and they've worked very well for me. They come in a, in a neon blue and a bright yellow. Very, very effective on ice. Works very well. Again, add a small little sprawl swivel with a... 13, 14, 15 inch fluorocarbon leader if you're going to worry about line shy fish. But I've had many days where I tie direct with this stuff. Never have to worry about fish coming on or not biting. You know, no stretch, you know, for this type of line. A lot of sensitivity for deep water fish. So braids have come a long ways and they give you another option for line choices. So there we go. We touched briefly. Again, tip of the iceberg, like I like to say with a lot of these things, for getting rods, reels, line in your arms. As far as the tackle goes, um, I use a lot of different things and I let the day dictate what I'm going to use as far as tackle goes. You know, I usually start with, let's say, a jigging spoon. A jigging spoon is probably going to be one of your more versatile options for most species. You know, even panfish. I know we're talking about game fish, but a jigging spoon is going to give you versatility from basically every end of the spectrum, whether you're targeting small fish up to large game fish being pike and lake trout. So my go-to that I always start with tends to be a buckshot rattle spoon, that Northland Tackle buckshot rattle spoon. Very effective. Glow red, awesome color. Seems to work well on almost every body of water for a variety of species. You know, I start usually with a quarter ounce if I'm running and gunning for aggressive fish, whether it be walleyes, pike, or whatever other type of game fish you're targeting. This is on a medium action. Thorn Brothers Walleye Sweetheart. I got a 500 series Shimano Sahara on here with five or six pound test line. Run and gun, chase them down. Whether you want to tip them with a minnow head or um, some sort of artificial presentation, that's up to you. Gulp Alive has those artificial minnow heads now that I've done very well with, not digging in the minnow bucket. But if you want to rip off a fathead minnow or a chunk of whatever it might be that's live, throw it on there. Seems to work well to entice some of these fish. So, jigging spoons, very, very effective. Northern Tackle's got a couple options. That buckshot rattle spoon, the macho minnow is another one that we've sold. Very well at Thorn Brothers and Ivy added to my arsenal. All the uh, live forage options, the moxie minnow, you got a lot of them out there that are going to work very well to catch these fish that are very lifelike. We're very, very spoiled as ice fishing because when you go into these tackle shops and look in the wall of tackle, no longer do you have a fire tiger, a red, a blue. No, you have a sunfish, you have a fathead, you have a dace, you have all these baits that look like the forage that these fish are feeding on. So again, very, very spoiled ice, ice fishermen for options. If you need to match the hatch, you have it. You have about every option out there. Fish are feeding on golden shiners. Live Fork Northern Tackle gives you a golden shiner jigging spoon. So a lot of options out there to catch a lot of fish. So like I said, jigging spoons, definitely a go-to for a lot of ice anglers. One of my personal favorites, something I usually start with. I said quarter ounce, if I go down to an eighth, if I'm targeting, you know, say metro area walleyes where I know I'm going to catch more 13 to 16 inches than I'm going to catch 18 to 25s, I might drop down to, say, an eighth ounce or a sixteenth ounce. That might be my aggressive presentation because I dictate my presentation to the type of fish I'm targeting. You can generally know whether you're going to catch a lot of big fish. If I'm going up to Mille Lacs, Lake of the Woods, going up to Devil's Lake, if I'm fishing Erie, wherever I might be, I might go up to a quarter ounce or even a half ounce spoon and start with that right off the bat. But for me, I'm generally fishing metro areas. That's where I spend most of my time guiding. Eighth ounce, you know, quarter ounce, and even down to sixteenth ounce. I'll use a lot for my walleye. So, moving on from jigging spoons, uh, swimming lures, baits like the puppet minnow from Northern Tackle, the jigging wrap. All those sorts of baits are going to be very, very effective. They're going to want to swim in a circle. They're tracking fish from large areas. If I'm fishing very, very intimate pieces of structure, they work very well. But they really excel on large flats. If I'm running and gunning along an outside weed edge trying to locate fish and draw fish in an area, baits like those swimming lures 
cover a lot of water and attract fishing from a long distance. They work very, very effectively for walleyes and pike, your larger game fish. So check out swimming lures. Again, as far as color option goes, let that dictate based on the forge that you think it's bringing in. If you're fishing a lake that's abundant in perch, try and match it with the perch pattern. If you're fishing lakes that have a lot of gold shiners, something in the gold color. If you got a lot of fathead minnows or chub minnows in your lake that these fish are feeding on, something maybe more silver pattern. So again, have a few different options there and don't be afraid to retie onto something else. It takes seconds to retie, but days to forget a lost fishing trip. So if it takes you two seconds to retie to a different color, give it a shot. You never know what might happen. So again, swimming lures, a very, very popular option. I talked about the, uh, the chubby darter, those sorts of baits. Very, very effective. The Samuel Chubby Darter happens to be one of my favorites. It's a heavy presentation bait, small and effective, awesome color patterns. Adds a lot of vibration in the water, you know, draws fishing from a distance. Another common theme recently is going to be your lipless crankbaits, whether it be a Samuel that has a new zipper, size 4, you've got uh, Rapala clacking wraps, the general rattle wraps, rattle traps, or whatever it might be. Lipless crankbaits are coming a long ways. The Fish Boys came out with one targeting big water walleyes where they did a complete segment on fishing those types of, bait, types of baits. Very effective, catching a lot of fish. That's probably your extreme when it comes to aggressive presentation, but we've seen it work, and it will work, so don't throw that out of the arsenal. You probably have some in your summer tackle box. You've heard me say it before. When summer's done, that tackle does not get put away and left to rot in the garage. A lot of the elements get brought into your ice fishing arsenal to be fished effectively under the ice, too. So we got chicken spoons, swimming lures. Those sorts of things are covered. We know they work. We know they work very well. Plastics, artificials. Usually when you think artificials for ice fishing, again, you think panfish. Myself, I train artificials a lot when it comes to walleyes and pike under the ice. You know, you got your Mimic Minnow from Northland Tackle. Very, very effective. Brian Bro Brosdahl. Um, he and I had a conversation about this years ago when Thornbrothers used to be in Fridley at the old store when he came by and he says, you know what, this has been my go-to bait for, for big pike and walleye for a long time. You know, I've caught a lot of fish on Mimic Minnows. You know, so I started using the Mimic Minnow more and more ever since that. I figured, okay, bro, bro knows. I mean, he's caught a few fish in his lifetime, maybe one or two. So I tied on one of these, started catching a lot of fish. You know, prior to this, I used a lot of baits out there, whether it be a 2-inch, 3-inch, 4-inch power minnow from Berkeley. You know, all those sorts of things. Tube baits, I take literally, you know, 7-inch ringworms and, and ribbon tail worms that I use for bass in the summer and cut them down to get a 3-inch profile. I've caught a lot of fish doing that. So don't be afraid to jump outside the box and fish some of these plastics that we throw for walleye bass and crappies through the open water and bring them into your, your ice fishing arsenal. Another one that I do really well with is just, I tip a lot of things with just a 3-inch or 4-inch uh, Berkeley uh, grub. This is a white grub. White tends to work very well under the ice. It's not something that's a secret, but it works very well. It adds scent. You can manipulate the size of these, whether you cut them down to match what you're fishing. Uh, the Lindy, uh, Lindy um, Flyer Jig works very well with these. You just rip a little piece off, shove it on there, spins in a circle. Very, very effective for hole hopping. Your minnow's not freezing from hole to hole. You can run and gun very effectively. A very, very good option for aggressive presentation. I've also done well with twister tails on spoons. I rip off most of the body with the twister tail, so I have just a small portion of the meat and just the tail, and I hook down the treble hook. It gives profile, it gives vibration, again, it gives scent because you're using something like a power bait formula. All those things seem to work very well to entice and trigger fish, especially when you're targeting an aggressive fish. So the presentations, we touched just the tip of the iceberg. Blade baits, cicadas, head and sonars, those sorts of things are going to work great on aggressive fish under the ice, whether it be walleye, bass, pike. So Grab your arsenal, look at some of these things that you think are going to work. Get out there right now, maybe by, on the dock at the local lake or whether, wherever you might be. Rip them around, see how they look. Old fish tanks sit in the garage, fill it with water. Tinker around with that in the garage, see how these baits are going to perform. And then start respooling your rods, getting ready for this type of year because we're targeting bigger fish, aggressive game fish. We're not talking half ounce panfish, we're talking hopefully pound inch walleyes, giant pike. So make sure your line's up to par, get your reels ready, your rods ready, get everything rigged right now so when we hit the ice here in a couple weeks, we're running on all, all cylinders here. So again, we talked about location, we're going to focus on deep weeds, we're going to focus on green weeds, we're going to focus on isolated structure, main or offshore structure, uh, close to shore, mouths or next downs, mouths of those channels and next downs are going to hold a lot of fish, shallow cover that provides a lot of forage and comfort, game fish are going to follow because they're going to feed on these bait fish. 
Keep those in mind. We talked about rods, reels. We got all that stuff nailed down in presentation to be aggressive. As far as hitting a body of water, what I like to do is I, I move. I'm running gun. My Strike Master Laser Pro Auger gets a lot of action, cuts a lot of holes, cuts a very quick hole. So I run and gun. I pepper a lot of areas until I find a pattern that's going to work. Again, we don't have the luxury of being in a boat where we can troll around. A lot of fishermen troll for walleyes and pike during the open water season. We can't do that as effectively right now. So be ready to move. During the daytime, if you're chasing these game fish, move. Try and find them. But a rule of thumb come nighttime, try and have a pattern staked down and hold it out. A lot of times what happens come nighttime is we miss that window. Fish come in, they move back out. We miss the opportunity if we're running and gunning too much. So get on top of a likely spot and wait for the fish to come to you because these game fish will feed at sundown. So come 2.33 o'clock, set up camp somewhere, sit down in your clam fish trap, and be ready for fish to come and hold on to your shorts. So a lot of options out there for aggressive game fish. We just touched the tip of the iceberg. Hopefully this season some of these tactics work. Please send me your pictures. You know, I'll show some pictures on the website of some of these big pike and walleyes that we catch using some of these tactics. Any questions about any of the gear you see, you can definitely contact us here or check out some of the sponsors here and ask them. Thorn Brothers there in Blaine, they've got awesome rod staff building rods every day. Call them if you have a question about a specific rod for a presentation you're going to use. Like I said, talk about a lot of options. Aggressive game fish, get out there and chase these fish. Maybe for once let the tip-ups stay at home and the dead sticks and try and target these fish by running after them. I think you'd be surprised how many pike you catch on a rod and reel versus a tip up no matter the time of year but especially come early ice aggressive game, tic -tac game fish tactics are going to work very well. So hopefully the next time I see you we've got maybe a one or two ice reports from some people, some pictures of guys on the ice, maybe some fish caught, maybe we'll get on the ice depending on how the weather forms up here the next week. Otherwise be safe out there. A lot of ice fishing ahead of us. The ice show is coming up here in two weeks. Hopefully see a lot of you there. I'll be at Thorn Brothers there, at Thorn Brothers booth, you know, pretty much the entire week. And stop by and say hi. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the ice. We'll catch you next week with Trap Talk. Thanks for watching Aggressive Game Fish Tactics. Matt Johnson here at Trap Talk.